Lord's Day. Amen. 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 We're celebrating July 4th weekend. Uh, I'll be making announcements in a little bit, but we're excited about July 4th weekend and the freedoms that we enjoy. And uh, I just want to say thank all of you for being in the house of the Lord today. If you're a guest here, we're glad you're here today for the first time or second or third time. It doesn't matter. We're just glad you're here. Amen. Let's worship the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's have a good time in the Holy Ghost.
church. Let's give him a head clap of praise this morning. He's worthy. Hallelujah.
are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't we just lift our hands right now all over the building and thank God for setting us free. And if you're not free today, if you feel like you're in bondage, God can set you free this very moment. Hallelujah. you said I am free I'm free no matter how I feel no matter what I see your word is my authority in every season of life so as for me and my house we're gonna be free and I will stand up and fight for my freedom. Oh, I will stand up and take what belongs to me. And I will worship in my situation. Because I will lift my hands, lift my voice, declare I because we're all family this morning, amen? And we're about to sing this bridge and I want you to declare freedom for your house and your family today. If you don't have any family here, you still declare freedom for your family, okay? I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughters. I declare freedom for my sons. I declare what your word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see. I declare every chain is broken. We're going to be free. I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughters. For my son, I declare what your word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see, I declare every chain is broken. We're gonna be free. Cause as for me and my house, as for me.
I declare freedom for my family. I declare freedom for my home. I declare freedom for my daughters. I declare freedom for my sons. I declare what your word has spoken. No matter what I feel or what I see. I declare every chain is broken. Freedom is not always easy to obtain, but it's always worth it to obtain. I know that most of us have lived in freedom on a national level, and for so long we don't have any idea what it means to not live in freedom. But, but in your family and in your home and in your house, if you've been living in bondage, and all that means bondage, it, it doesn't have to be drugs or alcohol or some kind of wickedness. But you're just, you're captivated by something other than God. Something grabs your attention way more than God or His Word does. And, and, and you want to spend more time with God, but you really like to do that. And you really feel like doing that, and, and it's, it's got you, is what it's got. And that's not freedom. You're, you're being held captivated by it, but it might take a little bit of a fight to get out of that thing because... Once you begin to try to get away from it, it's going to reach out there and try to grab you one more time. <laughs> the devil doesn't like it when we try to get free. He don't like it. But I'm telling you, if you're willing, you can be free this morning. <laughs> you can be free this morning. I don't care if it's reaching out there trying to grab you one more time. You say no one more time. You say yes to God one more time and say no to whatever that is one more time. The Bible said they went to Nehemiah and they tried to get him off the wall that he was building. And he said, no. He said, why should I leave this great work and come down to where you are? And the Bible said the man came back four times with the same request. And Nehemiah answered him four times the same way. I'm not coming off of this wall. I'm doing a great work for God, and I don't have time to get off this wall. And get, the Bible said they thought to do him mischief. Anything that is causing you to be pulled away from God, I don't care how innocent it seems, there's a spirit behind it that thinks to do you mischief. It wants to do you mischief. And the mischief is getting you totally and completely away from Jesus Christ. That's what the enemy wants. That's what the enemy wants. But you can have freedom in your house. But you're going to have to be willing to fight for it. Doesn't always come easy, but you can have it. And once you have it, it's a lot easier to maintain it. It's easier to maintain it once you get it. Because you've stood your ground. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to the Lord and thank God. Thank God for his mercy and grace. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You can be seated for just a moment. We're going to probably get back up and worship the Lord in a minute, but in a minute we're going to receive our offering. Uh, but nonetheless, I want to have, have a few announcements that I'd like to make. First and foremost, this evening at 5 p.m. we're having our Freedom Fellowship. Uh, I don't care if this is your first time coming here today. If you want to join us at 5 p.m. out in this parking lot in this grass area, speaking of which, all you guys, if you're coming tonight, Park on this side of the building so we can have this accessible. We're going to have a water slide out here. Uh, from the looks of the weather, it should be all gone by 5 o'clock. There will be weather passing through, but don't call or text and ask if we're canceling because we are not. We'll shoot fireworks inside this building if we got to, but we are going to see fireworks tonight. Amen. A lot of money was spent on it. You're not going to see just a few firecrackers, eh? There's almost nine. There's almost nine hundred dollars worth of fireworks, big stuff that we or that has been bought, and so uh, it it might even be better than last year's. I don't know. Being topped it last year, it was just five hundred. Now we got eight hundred fifty dollars worth, and so uh, thank thank you to those of you that 
uh, donated towards that. Also, uh, if you want to bring something and you haven't already, uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. At this point, just go get it. Go get it today. I, and uh, the church is taking care of all the drinks, plates, cups, things of that nature. But uh, if you want to bring hamburgers, hot dogs, buns, a side, dessert, any one of those things, uh, feel free to do so. And if you can't afford to, then just come on and eat anyway and have a good time with us. And like I said, you're welcome to come, even if it's your first time here today. Yes. We want you to come. <clears throat> we will have a water slide, like I said, for the kids. And, and uh, we're just looking forward to a good time. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. We're going to receive our offering at this time. Continue to worship at Sister Ashley Ivy Sings. And uh, we love Sister Ashley here. Amen. Always does a wonderful job. Yes, she does. Yes. So glad the Ivies are with us. And as I said earlier, if you're a guest here, we're so glad you're here today. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless this offering. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give. And, Lord, we ask you, God, to bless this offering. God, we want to use it for your glory, God. Lord, not for self-advancement, but for advancement of the gospel. And, Lord, I pray that you bless your people today. Keep your hand on them. Bless their finances, their jobs. God, in every way they can be blessed, let them be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. If you have an offering, you can make your way to the front at this time. God bless you as you give. Let's continue to worship the Lord. He's on 
thankful that he's on time. Amen. He ain't on our time, Brother Grady. Amen. He's, he's on his time. Amen. Hallelujah. So thankful. Amen. To be, be here again. Amen. She gets ready to do this next song. Amen. Had a good time yesterday. Amen. But I, I, I love so much that this service, it's a 4th of July celebration about freedom. We're celebrating freedom. But you know something? We have freedom in the spirit. We have freedom of the spirit. I feel like there's liberty in here. What is liberty but freedom? Amen. It's freedom. Amen. You see, the, and we look around in this world, and there's so much negativity. There's so much. You can see evil everywhere you look. It's like a flood at times, the way that it feels. And what is a flood if it's not an overwhelming force? If it's something that would encamp itself around you to try to push you down. But I'm telling you this morning, I will not be pushed down. And you won't either. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so thankful for freedom. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for freedom. Amen. In the anointing. Amen. Hallelujah.
Let's just take just a minute. Just a minute. Let's not rush God. Let him, let him minister to you right now. Each and every individual that came in this house today, in some way, shape, or form, you are 
under assault. You are under attack of the enemy. Whether it be mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Right now what's happening is there's a purge and taking place in some people's lives. God, right now we pray that there be an evacuation take place in our lives. You said that you are a way of escape, Father. Lord, we invite your presence into this house right now. Purge us, Father. Lord, remove every opposition from our minds. God, we thank you, Jesus. Can we magnify him? Just Let's take 30 seconds. Let's just take 30 seconds. Come on. Come on. Lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's doing something in here. He's doing something in here. Some of you that need sustaining, he's sustaining you right now. Go ahead. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. You may not even know what to say. Sometimes you... Under so much pressure and opposition, feels like you don't even have words, so much pain that's going on. I just want you to speak the name Jesus. There we go, church. God has already started doing a work this morning. And it started before some of us even walked into this house. There's a healing that's happening in here this morning. I can feel it. There's a restoration that's in this house. A renewal. Hallelujah. You see, God does not want anything fancy from us. He just wants us to come to him, worship him, magnify him. Our praise should be continually coming out of our mouth, and it should continually be a voice lifted up, magnifying him. I love what Pastor taught this morning. Our song should begin before the storm even starts. Our victory should be a declaration in the very face of defeat. That's how profound your faith should be. It should be that when there's overwhelming odds that are against you, when there is a flood that is against you, whether it be in the natural, whether it be in the supernatural, your praise should never be predicated and, and, and motivated and just silenced in any way that takes it away from God. Because when our praises go up to Him, it is a direct invitation to the gentleman that is Jesus. Because the word says that he inhabits the praises of his people. And if you would begin to praise him in the middle of the hell that you're facing. When your family is falling apart, praise Jesus. When your body is falling apart, praise Jesus. When the old flesh tries to rise up, praise Jesus. When they're walking you out of your job, praise Jesus. When they're repossessing your car, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. When people walk away from you, praise Jesus. You say, how can you stand and tell people this? It is because that in the midst of my storm, I want to praise him. Because I can't make it without him. So I want to praise him. And as I begin to praise him, he inhabits. That means he's no longer a visitor. When someone inhabits, they take up residence. And for too long, we've allowed the enemy to take up residence and real estate in our minds. It's time that we replace 
the negativity of our surroundings. It's time that we replace the negativity of our past. It's time that we replace because it happened to mama, it surely is going to happen to me. It's time that we change our language from a language of pain to our language becomes a desperation of praise. And in those moments of desperation, when you begin to call out to God, He begins to come and He inhabits within you. And what happens is He says, two kingdoms cannot reside in one place. One's going to be stronger than the other, Brother Shane. So what tells me is I begin to praise the King of glory. What He does is He begins to evict everything that's not of Him out of me. And it makes me want to give Him something that I do not have before. For. It makes him want, it makes me want to give him my all. Amen. So can we give him some praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read something to you. Amen. If we could stay, I know y'all just sit down. I should have just told you to stand up. Amen. I like it when we stand up for the reading of the word. I want to read a scripture to you. Amen. It's going to be in Isaiah 59 and 19. Amen. Isaiah 59, 19. Amen. You don't have to turn there because where I want you to turn to as you're standing, I want you to turn to the book of Genesis chapter 8. As I'm reading this to you, I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 8. Amen. But I want to read Isaiah 59, 19 as we're standing. It says, so shall they... So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Listen to this. When the enemy shall come in. Somebody say come in. Amen. Like a flood. Yeah, say it again. Let's say it together. Like a flood. Like a flood. Let's say this with me. The spirit. the spirit. Come on, say that again. The spirit, the spirit. Of, the Lord of the Lord shall. 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 That means show enough. Show enough. Lift up a standard against him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the service that we've had thus far. We thank you for your spirit, God. We thank you for the mighty name Jesus, that by no other name can we be saved. Lord, we thank you that by the name of Jesus that even demons tremble. God, we give you praise because you are restoration in the flood. God, we give you honor because you are sustaining power in the flood. God, we rejoice, God, because that when the enemy would overwhelm us and come against us through every tactic that he has, whether it be through old reputation father whether it be through the amen the disobedience and the witchcraft that the enemy would use against us we thank you lord that no matter what it is that the enemy will attack us with through every flood through every nation of past that your name that your spirit raises up a standard against him crestview florida would you give the king of glory a amen hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So thankful. You can be seated in here if you, if you would. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful. Amen. I want to say something real quick. Amen. It's so awesome to see all of you here today. Amen. This is just beautiful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give yourself a hand. Got a good looking group of people here. Amen. Hallelujah. I also want to... Uh, Say how honored I am to have some of my family here today. Amen. So most of y'all Crestview people, y'all hear me talk about Mama or Opal. And y'all hear me talk about Opal when I say Mama. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Mama Opal <laughs> and Mike drove. <laughs> Amen. Here today. They were already in Florida. And uh, so I'm, I, I believe they've enjoyed it. So thankful to have them here with us today. Amen. Thankful to have all of you. Amen. But let's get into it. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to uh, I want to read something to you and stay in Genesis as I read this to you, but stay in Genesis. And as you're in Genesis, you're going to go to Genesis chapter six, uh, G Genesis chapter eight, verse six, excuse me, eight and verse six. But I want to read something to you out of the book of Romans five verses three through five. It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Now, I want to pause right there. I'm going to do a little bit of teaching here at the beginning. Then we're going to get on into it. Amen. So, but we said, so Romans here, it says, and we, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Now, that word tribulation in the, in the Greek, it means a pressing 
or a pressing together, uh, an oppression, an affliction, a distress. We glory in the pressure because pressure will produce something. So hang out with me. We're going to tell you what it's going to produce out of you. It says that we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So here's the thing. These things are not activated until something negative has to happen, right? Something negative has to operate and something negative has to come in your way for something to get activated in your life. For every cause, amen, for every effect, cause there's effect, right? We know this. Something happens. So the word worketh in the Greek, it means to perform, to accomplish, to achieve, uh, to bring about something. Uh, for one thing, to render forth, to show what is inside. So that's what happens. The tribulation is going to bring out what's inside of you and as it brings out what's inside of you because of the onslaught of the enemy because you are able to withstand that tribulation will then produce patience and the word patience it means a constancy it means an endurance it is the characteristic of a man who is not deliberate only in purpose but is faithful and loyal to God uh, it's, it means uh, somebody who can sustain and persevere so that patience and then it says uh, that an experience Patience worketh experience. Well, the word experience, it means approved. It means a proof, a specimen of who is tried with. And then it also means that experience worketh uh, hope. And the word hope is an expectation of good. And in the Christian sense, a joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. It is also the source of a thing. And what is that source? It is Jesus. It is Christ in you. The Bible says the hope of glory. But so before we can get to the source of him, we have to have him indwelling with inside of us. We have to have him. His favor has to be upon us. But it is when that we are operating in him that is when the attack of the enemy comes because the enemy hates everything about you. He begins to come against you in a flood, in a manifestation of different ways. And what makes it so powerful is when he comes against you. If you are a child of God, that is when what's inside of you activates just like that you know they amen come on give him some praise hallelujah so it says that and that hope it maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us amen I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost amen somebody Hallelujah. So I'm thankful for these things. But what we have learned so far is that the enemy, when he comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. We find out later on here in the book of Romans what that standard is. It is something that is a tribulation. What's the flood that comes against you? But what happens is when the flood comes, it activates. It causes the Spirit to come up and fight for you. Too many times we are fighting for ourselves. We need to stop making a, a uh, and trying to vindicate for ourselves. Stop making a case for yourself. Stop trying to speak when other people are talking about you you don't have to defend yourself when Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected and shed his blood when he gave you your spirit you no longer had to fight for you amen he already had the final verdict I don't have to vindicate myself I don't have to fight for myself I don't have to defend myself because his spirit will speak for himself amen, amen. hallelujah so I want you to go into the book of uh, Genesis, the eighth chapter. We're going to read in verse six. It says, and we know the story, amen, of what happens with the ark. Amen. It says, and it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also, he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him and the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto, unto him into the ark. And I'm fixing to read that next verse, but I want to read something to you. So I read all of these characteristics to you about how powerful it is the anointing is. That when it's inside of you, what it does. So I want to read something pretty neat that I was studying on this message about olive trees. So an olive tree has a longevity to it. And that is that they can live for thousands of years. And there are many trees in the Mediterranean region right now 
that are scientifically verified to be as old or older than 2,000 years old. And, and here's the thing about it is an olive tree, it doesn't have to wait until it gets to where everybody else thinks that it's ready. When, well, it doesn't, it, when, you know, most trees, you don't really see anything until they are fully to produced and this, that, and the other. An olive tree doesn't have to do that. An olive tree is so prolific because it starts bearing fruit around five years after it's been planted. Around five years. So that tells me that, that it doesn't matter what people say about when something should happen. When it's time, it's just going to happen whether people like it or not. Amen. So... It also says that there is a tree, an olive tree right now that is in Croatia that is over 1,600 years old. Over, over 1,600 years old that is still producing fruit. So for all of you that says, I'm too old to be doing this, no, honey. It don't matter. There just, there's, there's not a time that you, you stop. The anointing makes room every time. Amen. And so not only that, an olive tree is indestructible. The root system of an olive tree is so robust that it is capable of regenerating itself even when the above ground of the structure of the tree is destroyed by frost, fire, or disease. In 1985 in Tuscany, a severe frost destroyed many productive and aged olive trees, ruining the livelihoods of many farmers. However, when the new season came, somebody say the new season. When the new season came and uh, the shoots began to appear out of the ground and spring forth, when the dead wood was removed, somebody say dead wood. Dead wood. When, when, the, when the, the dead things, the things that they were holding on to, when they got it out of the way, then new life could spring forth. You see, new life cannot spring forth out of you as long as you are holding on to dead things. As long as you're holding on to the pain of your past, you'll, you're never going to step into your new season. Amen. God can't do a new thing. He can't, you see, because something's got to come up and it can't come up when you've got all this dead mess around you. When the rubble and the pain of everything that it happened to you, the stones that people threw. Amen. I tell people all the time, and I've seen people post about it, but instead of picking up them stones and throwing them back, remove them off of your foundation of where your growth is. Keep them to your side and establish a, a stepping location that you can go up higher in God. And at the same time, what they tried to cover up, amen, it'll spring forth anyway. Amen. And the enemy has to watch as God bless. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so it's indestructible. And so when that new season, the new season came forth, it began to produce even more new, new trees and new fruit. Another thing about olive trees is they are unparchable. That means that they are trees that are drought friendly. That means they're made for the fire. That means they're made for the heat. That means that when everybody else passes out because, you know, some people, they got to have a word every single week. Amen. We go to places and amen, and, and we'll preach and, and people will want a word from me that I just gave the night before. They want something new. Well, here's the thing. You should be able to sustain in God that, that you have enough in you that no matter how long it takes before you get another one, when you do what he said the first time, Lord Jesus, when you do what he said the first time, you'll be able to make it through. Amen. Amen. See, we, we got to stop petting. We, Lord Jesus. Is this all right, Pastor? Amen. Hallelujah. So, so here's the thing. The, they're, they're unparchable, so they're made. They're drought friendly. Just like a eucalyptus tree, they don't need to be watered all the time. They don't always need a pat on the back. Not only that, a, 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 an olive tree is generous. Large olive trees produce enough oil, and on average, about 400 pounds of oil annually. Older and larger trees can produce even more. On estimation, there are about 865 million olive trees in the world today that are consistently producing oil. Amen? So here's the thing. So we know all of these things. Another thing about the olive tree is because they're sacred because of the oil. You go most places, they got that olive oil. They use it to pray for people. They would use it, amen, so many times in the Bible. The Bible talks about how the oil ran off of Aaron's beard. And it talks about how, amen, the anointing was so powerful that when the prophet of God came into the woman's house and he asked her what she had in her house. And she said, I have just a small cruise of oil. I got just a little bit. And he tells her, he says, go and get as many vessels as you can. Use what you got in your house. Don't borrow a few. As Borrow as many as you can. 
And when they had filled up all the vessels, the Bible says that the oil stayed. Even after the prophet had left, the oil stayed. What that tells me, and even in the Hebrew, that means that it lasts longer than it should have. That means that it continually flows. You have a continual flow inside of you. Something that is inside of you that will not stop. Amen. It was made for the fire. It was, Lord, i got to slow down. I'm getting ahead of myself. But you have something inside of you that is profound and powerful. Now, the Bible says here in the book of Genesis, verse 10. And he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive tree plucked off. So no one knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet another seven days and sent forth the dove, which returned not unto, again unto him any more. So we read where he first, he sends out a raven. See, he sends out this raven, and we read later on how about a a raven would would feed. It would bring something to the prophet of God. But when we read about it here, a raven, if you look at it, it's just big black bird. and got these big old black eyes, and it's it's not a very friendly looking bird. But God would use something sometimes that people didn't expect. But I want to use it in the aspect that Noah sends out the flesh first. Noah sends out the flesh first. Amen. So he, he sends out the flesh, and guess what? The flesh, it goes and it finds what it wants, but it don't come back. And sometimes the flesh will go and it won't find nothing. You see, a lot of people are only in this thing for their flesh, what they can get out of a thing. I love what Pastor said this morning during teaching. Some people only want to sing so they can be heard. Some people only want the stage so they can be seen. Some people only want a position so everybody can look at them. They don't have the right idea about it. What happens is they become an idol unto themselves. And, and when you become an idol unto yourself, People, you, God don't want to use that. And so you ever wonder why some people ain't effective? It's because they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Amen. So we have a lot of people that are selfish. And so the raven goes out and it don't come back. But what Noah was needing was a promise. What Noah was needing was a word. Is it safe? So when he sent it out, he, he, didn't, he didn't get nothing back. So he sent out the dove. The dove goes, comes back, and there's nothing. But the Bible says specifically that he waited seven days. He didn't, he didn't wait six days. He didn't wait eight days. He waited seven days. Got the number seven, that's the number of perfection. You see, a lot of times is we get out of season when we're not supposed to. We jump when we should have sat still. We got to wait for God's perfect timing. Sometimes God hasn't done a thing for you yet. Amen. Because you're trying to move ahead of him. And sometimes the hardest thing to do is to sit and wait. That's the hardest thing to do is to sit and wait. You see, God loves you enough to be late on your time, but on time with his time. That's how much God loves you. Because it's a cultivation type thing. So he sends the dove. Doesn't bring anything back. And he waits seven days. Then the dove comes back. Then he sends the dove out again. This time it brings back an olive branch. This time it brings back that leaf from the olive tree. So Jesus would tell the disciples. He said that I am the vine. You are the branches. What the dove brought back to him, if we look at it just in carnal minds, as he brought it back, well, there's a tree, there's life, we can get out the ark now. But there is a spiritual thing that's happening right here. What the dove brought back was a direct connection to the overflowing anointing and kingdom of God. Amen. Because he brought back something. You see, that's what it is. And that's why I title this message Floodproof. If you want to know what the title of this message is, it's Floodproof. And even though the sin of the world, God had to destroy it with the water. That always blew my mind that, amen, people couldn't act right, they couldn't act right for very long. God had to immediately say, look... I got to start over. Y'all don't know how to act. We ain't even made it out of the first book of the Bible, God having to get people together. Lord, have mercy. So he, we, we know that the flood came. But see, I don't want to talk about, I don't, want to, I don't want us to focus on that right now. We'll get back into it in a minute. But you see, the olive tree, and the Bible says that during the time that the flood came, all of the days that they were there, that everything was destroyed. The animals were destroyed. The people were destroyed. Buildings were destroyed. Somebody, all of this stuff was destroyed. But what that tells me is, is through the flood, through everything else, the oil will always find a place to survive. Everything can go wrong. But you can best bet the chosen seed of God. What God 
blessings will not be destroyed in the flood. Hallelujah. What he'll do is he'll remove everything that is not needed. He'll remove everything that is disobedient. But the best part he will always keep. Honey, you can go through as much as you want to. But if you are a child of God, the seed of God will always prosper. The anointing will always prosper. Some of you done been through so much in your life and you don't even know why you're still here. It is because of the flow of God and the favor of God has been upon your life. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to give him some praise. We've got so much that's going on right now in this world. And the problem is, church, is we're allowing what's going on in the world to affect our language. We're allowing problems to affect our speech. We're allowing situations in our family to affect our speech. Come on now. We're allowing problems in our marriage to affect our speech. We're allowing problems with our children affect our speech. We're allowing problems in our body to affect our speech. What happens is when you conduct yourself as the way the world does. When the world has a problem, they talk about it. When the world has a problem, they get on Facebook about it. When the world don't like something, they're going to tell everybody about it. But the church is supposed to come out, right? It's supposed to be separate. That means that when, the, when we're going through something, we need to be that shelter. Our language needs to be as such that even though I'm in the storm, the storm ain't in me. And even though the flood would try to overcome me, I can't be overcame. Because see, if you take oil and you put it in a vessel, then you put pour water on it that oil will come right back up it does not it does not uh, become the water it stays the oil see the church needs to stay the church the anointing needs to stay the anointing do not transfer who you are you need to protect your oil you need to protect who you are in God we got to stop giving it out to people who ain't trying themselves The ten virgins that Jesus talked about in the New Testament. Five were wise. Five were foolish. You see, some people got some oil, but they don't want to cultivate it to make it more oil. And so instead of using their oil, they want your oil. See, some people, they don't want to have a relationship with God on their own. They want your relationship. They want your testimony. But it don't work that way. You see, your oil is your oil. See, it's generous. That's the thing you got to understand about it. I just told you about the olive tree. It's a generous thing because there's over 865 million. Why? If there is so many, I don't need your testimony if you got your own. Amen. And you don't need mine. Amen. Here's the thing about it. We've got enough oil in between us. Amen. That there ain't a devil in hell that can stop what God's going to do. What I love about the oil. Hallelujah. Jesus, have mercy. What I love about it. Amen. Is in this passage of scripture. We don't understand understand how prolific and how profound that the uh, that the olive tree was the only thing that stayed it took the flood to activate the promise of the olive tree it took the flood to activate amen the olive branch it took the flood hallelujah it took the pain you see what you don't understand is yes you're going through it but the thing that you're going through is pressing you into a position to where God can directly push you forward and propel you in the kingdom Some of you right now under the sound of my voice, you've been praying for God to do something. And the more that you pray, it seems like the worse things get. Here's the thing. Don't don't envy it. Don't hate it. Don't, Don't have bad feelings about it. Embrace the bad things that are coming your way. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Every time we go through something, we're ready to give up. Every time we go through something, well, I don't know why this is happening to me. I'm just, I ain't even going. I ain't even going. You got to go on regardless. You got to go on regardless. Because we're never going to be the vision. We're never going to be the light in the darkness if we allow the light or if we allow the darkness to overcome our light. You see, a lighthouse, its sole purpose is to be a light to the ships. But what happens if the lighthouse says, I'm not feeling it today? What happens if the lighthouse says, things ain't going my way. I'm getting flooded with too much. I'm clocking out. 
I'm going to the house, blowing out the flame. They can figure it out on their own. We want people to come to church. We want them to be invited by the Spirit of God. But here's the thing. The Spirit of God cannot invite them through us if we're shutting it off and we're stifling it and we're saying, I'm going to stay at the house. When you get so frustrated that you begin to act like the problem that the people around you have, you cannot be an overcomer. Amen. You cannot have freedom in your life. You have too much bondage. When you allow that thing that's trying to chain you, when you allow it to succeed, Amen. Here's the thing about it. The chains are around your body, but they are not over your mouth. Amen. So while the bondage tries to come your way, it is through your voice. Amen. That we lift up the name of Jesus and we shout with the Lord with a voice of triumph that the chains fall off of us. Because we have dominion, we have access, we have authority. So when somebody comes to you, you could have been going through all kind of stuff. Hear me now. Now, I'm not talking about your inner circle. That's not what I'm talking about. If we go out in public, 90% of the time, I can tell you sooner who goes to church than I can tell you who's in the world. And the reason is, you can see some church people who will tell you they got the victory, but they ain't reminded their face yet. They always just got a bad attitude. Ooh, child, how you doing? Girl, don't even get me started. (laughs) My phone been blowing up all morning. People say, did you see what such and such posts? I get on there, they're talking about me. I'm feeling bad. My kids ain't acting right. And this, that, and the other. Not one time in any particular part of that, that paragraph of words that just spewed out of their mouth did they ever edify the kingdom of God. Not one time did they say, I'm going through it, but God's going to make me make a way for me. Not one time did they say, you know, I ain't feeling good right now, but I believe that God's going to get me well before it's over with. I know that my kids is acting up, but I know God's going to get them right. I know all this thing is happening, but I know God is going to make a way. You see, we got to change our language because how in the world is the world going to want what we got if we talk like they do? You see, all of these floods that are going around, we got people that are talking about, you know, all this gas. I could stay right there all day if I wanted to, and I'm not going to. We got a lot of stuff to do today. But a lot of people ask us all the time, how are y'all doing what you do with these gas prices the way they are? So for those of y'all that are, that are here that are new that don't know anything about us, we are full-time ministry. We own the road. That's what we do. We own the road. Whether gas has been $1.79 and even if the, they push it up to ten seventy nine, I will not be affected. The reason is is because when you operate under the anointing, when you are the seed of God, he said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll make you the lender and not the borrower. You see, when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, somebody needs to pick this up. If I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, God will provide. Hallelujah. He'll make a way. Honey, I don't care if all you got is $20. Favor will be so strong in your life. You can drive up to the pump. Hallelujah. And somebody say, you know what? I got you today. And they'll put $70 in your gas tank. And you can keep your 20. Hallelujah. And you can sow into God. Hallelujah. God will bless you that many ways. So many ways that will make your head spin. But you have got to change your mindset. You got to change your language. You have got to say, if I can get me right, God will do right by me. You see, the olive tree was made to sustain this thing. It was made specifically by God to be an oil producer. It was made specifically by God to be able to handle the heat of things. It was made specifically by God that when things got bad on the outside, the root of it was so strong that when the bad was over, the good would show up. It's just like the child of God. You are made specifically when things are going wrong. 
strong, you can withstand it. When the fires of hell are coming against you, you can withstand it. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit that's within you, it begins to activate. And it raises up a standard that says, not today. You can push all you want to. You can overwhelm me all you want to. But there's something inside of me that pushes against what you're trying to bring to the table. When the enemy comes in like a flood. When the enemy comes in like a flood. You see, when he comes against you, we give him way too much notoriety. Way too much. Way too much. You see, I'm very aware that the enemy's there. It's very evident that the enemy wants to fight. But we spend too much time talking about him than we do talking about God. And not only that. I may have talked about it here, I, I can't remember. But we spend too much time blaming him for storms that we created. I hear people all the time talking about, well, I'm going through a storm. All right, I'll be praying for you. And then they get to talking to you. And they'll tell you, well, you know, I might have said something when I shouldn't have. Well, I made this post on Facebook. I know I shouldn't have made it, but now everybody's upset. Now, here's the thing. There's a difference when you are, you're, if you're getting on there and you're talking about the glory of God and the enemy comes after you because you're, 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 you're just talking about the Lord and, and you're just, you know, everybody's seeing it and you're not coming and trying to tear everybody down. But if you're lifting up the name of Jesus and then the enemy comes at you, that's one thing. But when you get on there and you're a busybody and you're meddling and you're complaining and all this other kind of stuff, you are inviting You are inviting things. You see, when you invite things in, this is how precious your oil is. You don't need to allow any flies to get in your oil. Because if you get flies in your oil, then your oil becomes tainted. You see, there's a reason why the man of God told the woman, he said, once you get those cruises in your house, once you get those vessels in your house, I preached it here, close the door. Once you get once you get inside your house, shut the door behind you because there's people that want your oil but haven't went through what you went through to get your oil. They want your anointing and they ain't willing to pay the price that you did. And so that's why you got to shut the door behind you because there are thieves. The Bible says that the enemy is a thief. He's a liar. He wants to rob from you. So you got to shut the door behind you. Don't allow the enemy to come in. That's even in your language. So don't create a storm where you say, well, you know, God was blessing me, but I left my door wide open and then all of this stuff happened. That ain't God's fault. Just for an example, our check engine light just recently come on, so I got to get an oil change. It says, oil change required. That's what it says. Or it says, uh, first it'll pop up and it'll say, uh, oil change soon. And then if you don't get it after that, then it'll say, oil change required. Well, we've been going so much, I haven't been home. And so I had not got my oil change yet. So I got to get my oil changed. Now, if I don't get my oil changed, and I keep going knowing there's a problem, and I don't address the problem, It's not the devil's fault. It's not God's fault when the engine blows up because I didn't do what I needed to do. So don't be coming in the house of God when your oil light's been on for six, seven months a year. And then all of a sudden you, you, the, the engine blow up. And you say, you know, that old devil just after me, my, just, my engine blowed up. I know that light was on. I didn't do nothing about it. I knew the devil was after my family, and I I knew I should have shut the TV off. I ain't saying TV's wrong. I'm talking about I knew I shouldn't have let my kids watch all that mess. I shouldn't have let them listen to all that mess. I shouldn't have been hanging around those people. I knew that if I stayed around the drama long enough, that something was going to get inside of me that did not need to get inside of me because I didn't protect my oil. I didn't protect my anointing. There comes a time when you got to shut people off. Amen. Here comes a time when you got to walk away because your oil is too valuable there comes a time where it's okay to say no you are made to be flood proof not part of the flood you are made to be flood proof not part of the flood you are made to be a solution not a problem you see people that come to you with your problems or with their problems and instead of getting into it with them and, and, and contributing to it You need to provide the solution. 
You need to say, well, I know that this tribulation is going on. You're just in the pressing process right now. God's just pressing you. That's what's going on. And, and through this, it's going to work some experience in you that you didn't have before. It's going to make some endurance inside of you that you didn't have before. So if you keep on, it's going, you're going to get some patience. And, and it'll make you to be able to withstand these things. And when we get down to the source of the thing, God's going to show himself. Because you're different. So we should pour in the facts of who God is to people when things are going wrong. Instead of contributing for the problem. One thing that I hate that I hear a lot is people say, Jesus understands. Y'all might not like me after this, but I love you, and I love you enough to tell you the truth. If somebody talks bad about you, don't talk bad back to them or do what they did to you and then say, Jesus understands. Jesus shut that off right in the garden. When they come to take him away, the Bible says Peter drew the sword, doing it in defense of Jesus, and he cut the man's ear off. Jesus rebuked him. So no, Jesus is not going to make an excuse for you. He's merciful. He's just to forgive. His mercies are renewed every day. But we don't need to prostitute his grace. Amen. We don't need to do it. Why? I'll just get forgiveness later. No, how about if, it, if you just don't even need to do it? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, we ain't going to fall. We ain't going to mess up. We all fall. We mess up. So much. Sometimes I say something that might hurt somebody, and I didn't even realize it did. Because sometimes we do. We don't know. We're in the world. Everybody, people get offended over everything. So I stay repentant. But I don't go into something with a premeditated mindset that I'm going to do it just to get somebody. And then say, well, you know, I did this, but Jesus understands. No, sit down, devil. That's all you're doing. And what happens when you do that, you become part of the flood. You ain't flowing in the body. The, the oil is not manifested in your life. Hallelujah. So they came and all of this stuff happened and the, the dove brings it back. So the dove is a representation of the spirit. So it brings back the oil. The oil also, it represented fertility. That's growth. You see, so in all of this stuff, when everything is going wrong in your life, and the enemy is flooding you. You're flood proof. And so not only when the flood receded, the Bible talks about how they were able to get out of the boat. But the one thing that stood the test, I thought it was so powerful that the dove didn't bring back a pine tree, a uh, 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 limb from that. He didn't bring back, you know, uh, uh, anything else other than he uh, just straight up, he brought back an olive leaf. Because you are made to withstand when everybody else falls. Because you're flood proof. The enemy can't handle what's in you. He can't handle what's on you. He can't afford you. You're out of his price range. So the reason why you go through what you go through and what makes you separate is the fact that you are an olive tree. You are a vessel for the oil. That's who you are. And you are flood proof. And I want you to know, Crestview, this morning that everything that's going on in your life, you just hold on because eventually the flood's going to pass. It might pass like a kidney stone and it's going to be painful and it's going to push you and all of these things. But when it's over, when it's all said and done, you will be standing tall. You'll still be flowing in the anointing. You'll be fruitful. Amen. You'll be blessed. Hallelujah. Everything is going wrong in this world. Honey, you stay faithful to God. You will overcome. Hallelujah. The seed of God was made to prosper because you was flood proof. Hallelujah. I'm fixing to close. You are made to prosper. You are made to make it through this thing. Do not ever allow the enemy to get in your mind that you're broken. That you cannot be used by God because of your disability. If we could all stand as I'm about to close. I want to tell something to you. You see, when you are an olive tree, when you are made to stand and withstand the test of the enemy, there's something that separates you. And it's the favor that's on you. It's the Spirit of God. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost today, if you do not have God in your life, you need to get Him in your life. 
things in your life will never get better if you don't allow God to fill you up. Because, child, I need the Holy Ghost just to go to Walmart. But some of you are saying, I don't deserve this. The enemy will get in your mind to make you think that because of things that have happened to you, you don't deserve it. Because of hardships in your past, because of things that have went wrong in your life, abuse, whatever it might be, he will get it in your mind you don't, is, he, that you don't deserve the love of God because of your disability. There's a young man in the Bible by the name of Mephibosheth. We know the story of Mephibosheth, and for those that you don't know, when he was a young boy, he was five years old, a servant of the house was running, and when she was running, she was carrying him, and she dropped him, and he became lame. He became affected by something somebody else did. And his whole life, he was lame because of something somebody else done. And he, re he created a mindset in his mind that he didn't deserve anything. Even so much so that when even when David tried to bring him in and bless him, Mephibosheth, in the midst of his blessing, said, Why would you do this? I'm just a dead dog. You see, some of you don't know how to allow God to bless you. Because the enemy's got you so confused to think that you don't deserve it. But that's got to change. See, in that passage of Scripture, David is kind of like God, and Mephibosheth is like us, like, I don't deserve it. I've been in this place. I'm broken. You don't understand. God's like, I don't care. I want to bless you. So be quiet. Let me bless you. Sometimes we just need to hush, church, and let God do it. So the Bible says that he tells Mephibosheth that you will continually, somebody say continually, every day, every day, eat at my table. Not just you, but your seed, the ones that comes after you. As long as I have any say-so in the matter, you're going to sit here. He has him sit at the table. And I was telling Shane and Aaron about this yesterday. I said, when you sit down at the table with somebody, if we sit down, I don't care how tall you are. When you sit down at the table with me, I'm going to be able to look you in the eye. And not only am I going to be able to look you in the eye, Whatever happened in my past. So if you look at Mephibosheth, his head, that's the future. That's going forward, right? What's below is the past. Because you got to get past my head. So when Mephibosheth is sitting at the table, all you can see is Mephibosheth's future. Underneath the table, God never healed Mephibosheth. He stayed lame the rest of his life. But when you were to walk into the court and you would see him sitting at the table, you know what you didn't see? The disability. You couldn't see that he was lame. Why? Because Mephibosheth was flood proof to who he was. He was made to sit at the table. You're made to sit at the table. You're made to be blessed. You're made to make it through this thing. I, I, I don't know what you're facing. But I want you to know that the Spirit of God, when the enemy comes in like a flood, that overwhelming flow, that there's something that's so powerful that you yourself can't do it, but it's the God that's in you. He's going to raise up that standard. You were made to make it through. You were not made to drown. You weren't made to drown. Somebody needs to say that right now. I'm not going to drown. I'm not going to drown in this depression. I'm not going to drown in this pain. I'm not going to drown in, in debt. I'm not going to drown in depression. I'm not going to drown in oppression. I'm not going to drown in failure. I'm not going to drown in sin. I'm not going to do these things. I'm flood proof. And the oil brings me up. Yeah. Hallelujah. These altars are open. If you want to pray. If you don't have God in your life. If you don't, if you don't know him. I want you to come. And maybe, maybe, not only that, maybe things are so bad right now that you feel like you're sinking. I want you to come and pray. Maybe things are so bad, you don't know how you're going to make it through. The flood of emotions that you're going through. I remember nearly three years ago, me and Ashley, we went through a very, very tough time. And it was like literally every day. And we were doing what we were supposed to be doing. And nearly every single day, things kept getting worse. Every single day. And I didn't know why. I didn't know what to do. Didn't know what to do. People was coming against us. 
Thing, we, we didn't even know. I mean, it just kept on coming. And the only thing I knew to do was pray. And I didn't allow my language to become the battlefield that I was on. I didn't allow my, my voice when it spoke. I didn't allow that negativity to infiltrate into my testimony. What I began to do is I was praising God and I cried and I said, God, I need you to help me. And I fasted. I said, God, I need you to help me every day. God, I need you to help me. Before you know it, that in the midst of all this stuff that was going wrong, Sybil, my, my daughter who was up here singing with us, I believe she was eight at the time, seven, seven at the time. All of this bad stuff's going on. My seven-year-old daughter gets filled with the Holy Ghost. All of this stuff that's going on, me and my beautiful wife, we get married. All of this stuff that's going on, God kept coming through. See, we're expecting him to pull back the fire. We don't understand he's made you fireproof. I don't need him to pull back the storm. I just need him to be there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't need him to pull it back. Child, he gave you an umbrella. He gave you the ability to withstand it. Amen. Hallelujah. So what I want you to do is they begin to sing. Amen. These altars are open. It's, it's not just for the lost. That's one of the biggest misconceptions. Well, if I go up there, somebody's going to think this. It don't matter what people think. You need the breakthrough. You need the breakthrough. You need the deliverance. I don't care what people think. They think what they want to about me. I want to know what God knows and what God says about me. These altars is open right now if you need to pray. And if you need prayer, I'm going to pray for you. But as they begin to sing, come on, let, let's, let's understand who we are. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Love with no reservation. You're not looking for perfection. There's no need in me pretending. I'll give you everything I'll give you everything You deserve my full attention Nothing less than my
all of these are praying right now there's some of you and I said that I was going to talk about the flood of God I want you to hear me the flood of God destroys every work of the enemy it comes in and it destroys the pain it comes in and it destroys everything so those of you that are not up here this is what I want you to do I want you to raise your arms and I want you to say, God, flood me. God, flood me. God, flood me. My sister back here with the white and black striped shirt. Hallelujah. Yes, you, my sister. Yes, ma'am, you. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that God's about to flood you. He's about to flood you. And in this flood, there's some leeches of people that have tried to leech themselves onto you. That have pulled out of you that they want your life. They want, the, they want that good thing. There's even people that took advantage of you. But God's going to flood you even right now. He's going to flood you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sister that's standing next to you. I want you to know, my sister, it's not over. God's not done. God's not done. Hallelujah. God's not done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody give God some praise. Y'all keep playing. Y'all keep praying for these people. Keep praying. Keep praying. Hallelujah. God is so good. Let's keep praying. Let's keep letting God do this thing. Hallelujah. My young brother right here in the glasses. Right here. Young brother. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't know you. I don't know your name, anything like that. I know that we shook hands before the service. But I want you to be encouraged. I feel like right now you kind of, you kind of, there's times when you don't say it, but you just kind of feel lost in the shuffle. And the enemy wants you to feel like you're overlooked. But right now what's taking place is God is preparing you in this darkness that you're in. You see, the dove did not come back during the day. It didn't come back during the day. It came in the evening, in the night season. And right now you're in your night season. You feel literally lost 
with everything that's going on. And the dove is making its way to you. The dove is making its way to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want somebody to come up here. Actually, where's my wife? There you are. Amen. Brother Grady, I want you to come here. And I come here, Ashley. You stand right here. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn, turn this way. Turn this way. Amen. I, I want you to come in. I want you to stand right here. And I want you to take that oil and I want you to anoint her head. I have to do this the way the Lord showed me. She's standing in prayer for Sister Stacy right now, if you didn't know. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak a healing miracle right now. Muscles function properly. Everything right now in the name of Jesus. This will never be an issue again in Jesus' name. This will never be an issue again in Jesus' name. We declare victory. We declare healing. We declare a miracle right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. I know I did things different today. And if you want prayer, we'll pray for you. But church, the reason why I did things different today is because God is growing us to be different. We've got to get out of this mind frame that somebody has to consistently be laying their hands on us. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm not saying that it's wrong, but we have become too dependent upon man. We have become gift chaser, uh, chasers, and we have become, we've become preacher chasers and prophet chasers, and we've got away from being a God chaser. In the season that we're living in, in the time that we're living in, God is going to begin to elevate this is a word that I have for everybody in here. In this season that we're living in, you're going to see people, their gifts are going to increase. and They're going to walk in gifts that they didn't before. The reason for this is, he said in the last days, he poured out his spirit upon all flesh. The fivefold ministry is going to be fully effective. But it's only going to happen to those who do the will of God and if they obey God. That does not mean you're going to get to live however you want to and you're going to prophesy over everybody. That don't mean you're going to get to live how you want to and you're going to get to preach for everybody. That don't mean that. What that means is there is a set apart people that are chasing after God. We have people who have fell in love with the movement of God and not fell in love with Him. He cannot move the mountains in our life if we don't talk to Him. So I speak a word over each and every individual in here that God will bless you in your gifts and they'll increase if you do what He says. I've never done this before. Never done this here before. The Lord began to deal with me about this and then it was praying and He said, you're going to impart. And He said, you're going to give this word to people. Because in this last day that we're living in, if you don't think we're in the last days, you need to wake up. But there's going to be people that are going to begin to operate differently. And those people that he's going to use and they're going to operate differently, they're not going to have a heady spirit. They're going to be humble about it. You're going to see people that are going to begin to operate in healings that did not operate in healings before. So these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. That believe. And if you don't believe, stay home. That's very blunt and brutal. But if you don't believe, stay home. 
the reason why I say that is because there's going to be people that are going to try to get out and they're going to try to go through the motions and they're going to be overcame with what they were trying to cast out. We don't need to be in distress. We don't need to be fearful. We need to be in the flow of God. God's seed's going to prosper. His voice will be declared. And He'll use many nations to do it. And what I mean by that is people. Names. You see, at one time, people were, were their nation was like Abraham. That was his family. Your family, if you'll let God do it, your children will do the works of God. But they've got to see God in you first. We can't blame the world when we live like the devil in front of them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give God some praise. Amen, amen. What a wonderful ministry, brother and sister Ivy have. We're so thankful for them. Uh, don't forget, we're going to be dismissed in here, in here in a minute, but uh, please don't forget, 5 o'clock, our, our freedom celebration is going to be out here in the park. Bring uh, chairs to sit in. Uh, please, please bring lawn chairs, whatever you got for that. And uh, don't forget, bring some food if you can. If you can't, then just come on anyway. But uh, we don't want to stop anybody from coming. But if you can bring something, please do so. But that will be at 5 o'clock. We'll have an amazing fireworks show. And if you need to be dismissed, you are more than welcome to. Real quickly, here about five minutes, we're going to, uh, Brother and Steve and, and Sister Melissa asked me, they've been praying about this for a long time, and they just want to do a quick uh, renewal of their vows. And so we're excited for them to doing that. Amen. They've been through a lot, and they want to renew their vows. Uh, if you need to be dismissed, you're more than welcome to at this time. Or if you want to just hang out with us for five minutes, we're going to, Pray over them and let their vows, let them renew their vows. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Don't we love, brothers?